Mount St. Helens, the biggest volcanic eruption in North America in nearly a century. Virtually all life for 200 square miles is wiped out. It seems impossible that life could ever return to this barren wasteland. We found that a lot of our conventional wisdom was just flat wrong. In recent years, there are ominous signs. The volcano is awakening. These things were like skyscrapers that were being shoved out of the ground. They were literally that big. A 30-year quest to understand one of the most complicated volcanoes in the world is revealing new mysteries deep inside the mountain. We don't know whether it's going to erupt explosively again in two years or in 20 years or in 200 years. Is Mount St. Helens preparing to erupt again? Right now on Nova. Mount St. Helens, back from the dead. October 2004. Mount St. Helens comes back to life. Steam and ash spew from the crater on the mountain's summit. We saw the boiling material come out of the ground. We saw that it was blasting up. It was dark and it was light at the same time. It made a plume that rose up over the rim of the caldera and came up to above our altitude to 10 or 12,000 feet. It's a frightening development. For years, Mount St. Helens has been quiet. The volcano went from quiet to unrest to eruption very, very rapidly. It could be headed for a massive explosion. It seemed possible that we were headed toward an explosive eruption. We didn't know. That was a key question. The effort to understand what is happening inside the mountain couldn't be more urgent. Is the volcano about to repeat the events of three decades earlier, when it shattered the tranquility of its peaceful surroundings? Spring, 1980. Mount St. Helens is one of the major peaks in the Cascade Mountains. It's an area of outstanding beauty, rich in wildlife. For over 120 years, the volcano has been quiet. But in recent weeks, it's been rumbling. Nobody is sure what to expect. Then, on May 18, 1980, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake rocks the mountain. Within 10 seconds, the volcano's northern flank collapses in the largest landslide in recorded history. It releases millions of tons of magma in a colossal explosion. A cloud of searing gas and rock, known as a pyroclastic flow, races over the surrounding countryside. Forests are flattened. Four miles below the summit, an enormous lake is choked with debris.
the eruption continues to shoot poisonous steam and ash miles into the air. It was just, again, astounding is the best word to describe what happened in 1980 here at Mount St. Helens. The northern slope of the mountain is buried in several feet of ash. Virtually all life is extinguished. 57 people are dead. They include loggers, campers, scientists, and a reporter. Some are up to 13 miles away in areas considered safe. The plume of steam and ash rises miles into the sky for the rest of the day. The drifting ash cloud disrupts air traffic for hundreds of miles. The scale of the destruction is enormous. Across more than 200 square miles, the surge of ash and rock incinerates trees. Thousands of birds from more than 100 species disappear. Billions of insects are gone. Deer and elk are wiped out. This vast area of devastation becomes known as the blast or blowdown zone. Nearer the crater, ashen rocks from the landslide litter the northern slope of the mountain. It looks like the moon. It's called the pumice plain. It's directly below the crater. Four miles from the volcano, the enormous Spirit Lake is scarcely recognizable. The avalanche has lifted its bed more than 200 feet. The surface is smothered in dead trees. Hundreds of species of aquatic life, including insects, amphibians, and fish, are killed. It was black water, and it degassed and bubbled, and there was hot springs that were coming up. If you were to put your fingers in to your wrist and wiggle them, you wouldn't even be able to see your fingertips. That's how grossly modified the water was. Mount St. Helens is now a lifeless jumble of shattered forest, rock, and ash. It's hard to imagine life will ever return. The eruption was so powerful, it altered the shape of the mountain. Mount St. Helens was a typical cone-shaped volcano, known as a stratovolcano. But the landslide has torn 1,300 feet off the summit, leaving a gaping crater a mile wide and 2,000 feet deep. It's the largest volcanic eruption in North America in nearly a century. Weeks after the eruption, scientists arrive at the crater. The volcano is still steaming and rumbling. It's a new and unfamiliar world. One of the first to 